All right, what's up, Token2049? It's Eric Spivak here again, once again, for Blockster, as well with Genzio and a bunch of other media partners that we got here. And we have Declan of Aurora Labs, and we can't get any more time other than right now to sit with him and ask him a few questions in regards to what they're doing, why it matters, where it's going, and yeah, there's some exciting new things at the end of this. So, first off, Feel free to introduce yourself, where you're coming from, and um, I guess what your position or role is with Aurora, and then, um, yeah, what you guys do, and yeah, I think that'll be a good place to start. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, my name's Declan. Um, I'm Aurora Labs VP of Growth. So Aurora Labs is the network of virtual blockchains um, with the EVM compatible layer of NIR that was first founded in 2021. Um, and our kind of key product line uh, or service area is in virtual chains. Uh, and in terms of what Aurora's mission uh, and what it is we're trying to do, we're essentially giving projects the ability to launch their own chain, to have their own ecosystem and environment without competition, but more importantly, in a way that is no code, no cost, no complexity. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, it means that anybody right now can go to the website and deploy their own chain quicker than it would take me to complete this introduction. Um, and it doesn't matter who it is. You don't need to be an engineer, you don't need to be a developer. It just means that you can focus on what matters, which is building an awesome product. And how does that work? Like how does, so if I wanted my own chain and I'm not a blockchain developer and I don't know anything between layer one, layer two, et cetera, et cetera, I just know that I want one of these, that way I can build things on top of this. Are you a management? Are you an agnostic third party? How does this work? Give it, give it to me as if I'm like somewhat novice and amateur to the space and know very little, but am building something and I want to own every part of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in essence, the whole premise of a virtual chain uh, is, it, it, that, is that it abstracts all of the difficulties that is typically associated with launching your own chain. So if you take any project or any network out there, one of the problems that you have is you can try and do it yourself using open source technology, but you need a lot of engineering expertise. You could use um, some of the larger roll-up providers that are out there, you know, Gelato, um, but that costs money. In addition to that, not only do you need the chain, you need the ability to actually govern and manage that chain. So you need validators, you need an oracle, you need a block explorer, um, you know, you might need different gas mechanics. So what Aurora's basically done is taken all of that complexity and stripped it away. You know, so for a complete novice, they go to the website, they put, put in an email address, and then what they're taken to is the kind of chain deployment page. And what you do is you select what type of chain you want. Is it public? Is it permissions? You know, do you want people to be on a whitelist to ensure that only community members, for example, can interact with the chain? You can choose your own base token. You know, as of last week, actually, we uh, made Bitcoin a viable base token, meaning virtual chains um, you know, can, now ha can now actually have Bitcoin native liquidity despite being on an EVM compatible chain. That's great. Now, to ask, answer the question around third parties, all of the virtual chains that, um, are deployed on NIR. So NIR is the L1 in which the virtual chain is deployed on. Um, and the benefit of that, of course, is NIR has fantastic horizontal scaling opportunities, which means you're never going to have to worry about too many transactions, too many users, and you're never going to have to worry about congestion. Uh, you know, to put it in simple terms, yep. most networks and chains out there, they give you a single lane on a large highway to drive your car down. Right. With Aurora, we give you the whole damn highway, uh, you know, with no other cars. So you get that VIP so, treatment for your project. That's amazing. So, I mean, dare I put it in layman's terms and say it as simplified as this, which we know it's not, but would you say it's white label blockchain? Yeah, I'd, I'd actually say that's a pretty good analogy. Uh, yeah. You know, you stick your stamp on it, do whatever you want with it, you, yeah. you know, gas mechanics, whatever it is, yeah. uh, and you make it your own. No, I, I think that's sick. I think it, it provides a world of opportunity for people to plug and play and build without the headache and nuances of management, maintenance, and operation, which I think is a beautiful thing because that goes into democratizing access, and that's a huge part of the opportunities that exist in Web3 and crypto. So, and Near Protocol also has been around for a long time too, so there's a lot of credibility that's attached to that. And, and it sounds like you're also, with cross-chain liquidity, it sounds like there's some level of interoperability 
interoperability that also makes it even more appealing to people that might uh, favor one or another uh, token or, or chain. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's actually one step more than that. So, you know, even if you get great infrastructure and you have your own chain, liquidity is still one of the biggest challenges that are out there, not only for the chain itself, but for the users that interact with it. Um, you know, and again, this is something we've simplified with what we call the forwarder. Uh, and the forwarder allows any user to bring their assets from Binance, Coinbase, Gate, Qcoin, doesn't matter who, directly onto that virtual chain just by scanning a QR code. And we took that one step further when we launched Near Intense, which is the first multi-chain DEX that allows you to actually bring any assets and swap any assets from any network without even needing a wallet. You can actually just use an iOS passkey. So it truly is designed for the average person that isn't necessarily tech savvy. And more importantly, it's solving perhaps, in my opinion, one of the biggest challenges in Web3, you know, and that's the complexity and borders that live currently with networks, with Wallet Connect, um, you know, the, the millions of steps that are required uh, to actually interact even at a simple level with that. We yeah. solve it all. Yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. That's, uh, that is a fast track to accessibility to product with a zero knowledge style mindset and you're really breaking it down for average Joe to play in a sandbox and roll up their sleeves. I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, what would you say is like the biggest form of obstruction or adversity that you guys face though considering you have something very complex, very massive and I don't know how many people actually realize how big what you're talking about is. I, I understand just through trial and error and failure as well as interviewing so many different people, projects, founders. Um, but what, what would you say is like the biggest roadblock that you've been facing with growth and expansion and development or adoption? No, that's a, that's a great question. So I would say probably the biggest challenge is the variety of projects that we're getting and the approach uh, and strategy that needs to be taken with these projects. And to give the most simple example, you know, when you make something this simple, that anybody can deploy their own chain, what you're doing is opening the door to the traditional Web2 space. And what we're seeing, especially in uh, you know, verticals like real world assets and asset management, um, is a lot of these Web2 companies are trying to come in. But we have to manage that very differently than we do with Web3 native projects. You know, a Web3 project, they know much of what we already do. They know what they want, they know how they're gonna get there, they already have a strong community within the Web3 space. So for those guys, it's very simple. We're giving them speed, we're giving them uh, cost savings, and we're giving them the infrastructure so they can just hit the road running. Web2 companies are traditionally more cautious. They don't have the expertise in-house, they don't have the knowledge. So that's less about moving quickly and more about creating a proof of concept, um, you know, or putting a trial in place so they can test it for themselves and see it, whilst then being able to ramp it up um, so that they can then spread it out across their business. They also have a lot of legacy systems, yep. uh, you know, which naturally makes uh, integrations uh, something that they take more cautiously. Right, yeah. We do have a lot of legacy systems and antiquated technology, and I do think that's one of the reasons why I do appreciate and value how fast um, Web3 moves. I think the crypto space in general is very uh, move fast and break things, um, which might result in a lot of social irresponsibility and a lot of lack of thoughtfulness towards the consumer as well as the creator. Yeah. But within that, there is a tonality and narrative that can be approached through community and conviction and just really transparency and showing what you're doing, why you're doing it, why it matters, what's your mission, vision, and purpose. And I think you guys seem to be doing a, a pretty good job of that. So with that said, um, I know you have some things coming up that are down the pipeline. Is there anything that you want uh, the world to know about that they should be paying attention to, as well as maybe the best way to find you at the end of the day on socials or website or whatever it may be? Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, we've got, we've got a couple of uh, releases that uh, are coming out over the next few weeks. Um, but I'd be happy to actually share kind of some of that now. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I won't get into uh, too much trouble with the team. Um, the first thing that we're going to be releasing uh, is something that doesn't really exist uh, in the space today. That's going to be coming out on uh, May the 1st, um, and it's going to be the virtual chain marketplace. So all virtual chains are managed in our Aurora Cloud console. And what the marketplace is going to do is ensure that any project that comes to Aurora gets all of the support they need. And I don't just mean infrastructure. We've nailed that. You know, we're providing out of the box solutions that can be launched in 30 seconds. 
but they still need help with their token, for example, right? So we have a partner that will allow any project to simulate their tokenomics before they actually deploy that token to actually see how successful it's going to be. Maybe they need legal help to ensure that their company is structured in a way that allows them to um, operate in different markets. We have legal partners on the way. They might be a gaming project. We have several um, already on Aurora, in which case they might need GPU um, storage. We have a partner that will provide that. So the marketplace is going to be a hub where any project can get help from anybody that they need, um, and they'll be getting it at a rate they wouldn't be able to do directly. And the best thing is it's going to be transparent, which means any projects, so we might have three or four projects, for example, that do software development. Well, you can compare them openly. It's not going to be a closed door book, you know, where we're pushing people to partners um, that help us. It's it's solely about helping our projects and our community. Um, so I'd say the marketplace is one of the things I've been most excited about. My team have been working on it very hard. Right. Um, in addition to that, I touched on earlier um, what we call near intense, uh, which is the multi-chain DEX that allows you to swap assets. So for example, you could do it right now. You could swap Solana with Bitcoin, um, with Bera, with Aurora, with Near, with Ethereum. Um, I would say watch this very carefully over the next few months. Uh, you know, we've got some really exciting um, features and upgrades that are going to be coming that is going to provide a very powerful and very competitive solution for people that would like to operate on a, decentra uh, on a decentralized model, you know, rather than relying on the traditional, you know, generally fee intensive um, solutions like Coinbase and Binance. So yeah, it's going to be an exciting uh, six months. Hell, it's going to be an exciting year. Um, and you can absolutely find out what we're doing either via Twitter, uh, Aurora is near, um, or alternatively, you can go to the website and deploy your own chain quicker than I can say goodbye by going to auroracloud.dev. Very cool. You heard that here first, guys. No fee exchange. No, I'm just kidding. You didn't say that. It is but no fee. I'm, there are no I'm, fees I'm, currently I'm, uh, I'm, on Near Intense. So you no. can actually swap for nothing. Uh, will that be forever? Who knows? But right now, hey, I, I look at unique. I look at the arbitrage from all of these bridges and all of my conversions and all of my trades and swaps. And I just sit there wondering why I do anything else in life when I could just be capitalizing on that. It's insane. So anybody that's making all of this stuff a little bit more easier and smoother for accessibility and inclusion, I think is wonderful. It sounds like you're doing an incredible job of that. And I can't wait to actually check all of this stuff out myself because it's not like, I, when it sounds too good to be true, and it actually is, I become an advocate and an activist and an artist and a, a promoter and advertiser for things of that nature. So yeah, keep up the great work. Happy to have you here. And once again, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.